What's up guys? I'm sure as many of you saw in the last video, we blew the door off the MR2 here. Oh shit, there goes the door. And we went ahead and got the rest of the door pulled off and that guy is right here along with the skin that ripped off at the track. My original plan was just to cut this thing up and stick it in some random orders for you guys because I didn't know what else we were gonna do with this door and just kind of throw it away, try to find a new one or make the OEM door work. But we realized it's not too terrible. So what we're gonna try to do for the meantime, because we're trying to take this thing to Cletus and Cars, and that is May 6th and 7th. Hope to see you guys out there. We will be out there hopefully with the MR2, maybe get out there and race some of Cletus's fleet and uh, yeah, just make some passes. So we're gonna try to patch up this carbon door so we can make it out. We ordered some carbon fiber patches off of Amazon with the resin. So we're gonna try to fix these cracks right here. Then we're gonna try to panel bond and stick this all back together and get some Lexan windows in the MR2. So the door might not look perfect, but at least we can hopefully get it back on there, get it functional and uh, race it and get some more use out of this door even though it is pretty beat up. And while the MR2 is kind of down and we're just doing some general maintenance on it, we figured it would be a good time to check up on our clutch. So we went ahead and pulled the transmission as well. And this is our action triple disc clutch that came out of the MR2. And this thing has given us zero issues. You guys have seen how many seven second passes we have run on this thing. And we are slipping it hard on the launch. It has taken a full 1400 wheel horsepower through this thing. And it has not let us down or slipped once this whole time. But I messaged the guys over at Action. They wanted us to get some measurements just on the thickness of the discs with the friction material right here. And we are at the end of our lifespan here on this clutch. So we're at 0 0.093 inches and they said you want to replace these at about 0 0.095 and they should be like 0 0.105 new so they're at the point of replacement so they're actually a little overdue look at that spot freaking getting real thin and it was still holding on so zero complaints and figured it was time because we have just freaking been ripping on this thing so we went ahead and uh, reached out to them and they got us hooked up with a fresh set of discs and plates right here and floaters so we will be able to get this back into the mr2 we have to drop off the flywheel and get it resurfaced as well just got some heat in that guy but nothing too crazy so we'll get this resurfaced get the new discs and floaters into this pressure plate here get the mr2 all back together fix the carbon fiber door and she should be up and ripping again i also wanted to show this underneath we were getting pretty hot under here i don't know how well you'll see that on the camera but you can actually see these stress cracks right there just from the heat and pressure it's actually starting to crack the material so definitely a good time to go through the clutch but dude this thing has been through oh look at all the dust coming off that thing this thing is taking a beating so shout out to action clutch we'll get it all fixed up and see you guys at cletus and cars so it's looking like we might bring Susie the sidekick to the next cletus and cars so we went ahead and pulled the transmission out of this thing because Last time we drove it out to a car meet, it started smoking like crazy. We're not sure if the clutches have burned up or anything, or if it just, you know, had a massive transmission leak. One of the lines was pretty melted. Yeah, I was gonna say, so, real hot, so. You can see that's the transmission cooler line. And that thing is just completely melted on both yeah, ends. Yeah, I was probably losing some ATF through that line there. Yeah, so. But while we have it out, we just wanna make sure that everything is good. So we're gonna drop it off at a shop and just have this thing gone through and make sure it's ready to rip again. And if we can get this thing all back together, then we will be bringing it out to Indy yeah. for a burnout. I thought it did really solid the one time we had it out. Now we have more boost, not a sticking wastegate because the last time the wastegate got stuck open. Yeah, now we, now got, we got that got turbo there. smart gate in there that won't fail us. Yeah, yeah, it'll take the heat, unlike the eBay one that was on it. So should do pretty good. I mean, otherwise it's pretty solid. I think the last time we had it out, we kind of went through a bunch of stuff on it. So. Now it's literally just the transmission and I think it'd be good to go. Yep. Pop some more wheelies again. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> sick, dude. So even though we got this carport to protect the cars from rain and weather, if you look at the top, it has like these little gussets up here and uh, the birds like to hang out up there. This first one, you can't really see it on the camera, but there's like a little nest up there and they'll just sit up there, hang out, especially while it's raining and stuff. And we might not get rain and weather on the cars, but we do get a lot of bird poop <laughs> right there on the I'm windshield of Susie. Bell, dude. dude, got after it. That window. is disgusting. <laughs> so got the trans out and uh, we got it backed out now. 
Got ourselves a new power washer too. Freaking marketplace finds all week long, dude. Yeah, the this Harbor Freight one. Unit. Harbor Freight one took a crap on us, so we had to go with the old trusty Honda Easy Start. Yeah. Go ahead and blast this bird poop off real quick. Yeah. And then put some little spikes up there or something. Right. Keep them off of there. <laughs> Well guys, today is Wyatt's birthday and he actually just picked himself up a little early birthday present the other day. Yep. You want to show him your new rig here? Yep, just so everyone knows I turned 21 and <laughs> oh, uh, yes. got myself a new trailer. So I've been meaning to do it for a while now to get a nice enclosed to haul the race truck around and uh, trailer prices right now are freaking crazy. So ended up coming across this one for a really good deal. Jumped on it, the dude posted it that morning. I went and picked it up that evening. So uh, yeah, it's the new the new race truck hauler here. Oh yeah, man. Uh oh, it's a 28 foot, uh, 2019, 2020 unit. So a couple years old, but it's in really good shape. Inside of this thing is like brand freaking new. And it actually came with a bunch of accessories that are perfect for my setup, which I'll show you guys here in a second. Uh, just need to give it a quick buff on the outside. And then like I said, this thing's like brand freaking new and got it for a pretty good deal. So probably gonna get pretty inside. hot in there being black. Yeah, I wanted a white one, but white trailers are like hard to find down here right now for some reason. So, is what it is. For the deal I got on this one, I couldn't really pass it up. So, we'll uh, probably throw an AC unit in the future. That's kind of my plan with it. Throw AC in it. I've got a generator, so kind of go from there. Keep it a little cooler in there when we're out of the racing. Nice. And Finally got a hauler for the truck. Yeah, don't have to bum towels all the time anymore. So, I'll to open this guy up here. So it worked out perfect because whoever owned this before me used it to just store their race car. So it's got some race car stuff in it. Like I said, it's like brand new inside. Oh yeah, she is nice. Oh, we got the old fold out deal. Yep. That broke off on mine. Yep. So it's still attached, which is real nice. Then if we go in here, it came with ratchet straps. Nice holder for them. Freaking awesome. And come up here. It actually came with a nitrous bottle rack. Oh, that's so, perfect. Perfect for the truck because I got to carry like four spares everywhere I go. So nitrous holder. That's exactly how many you wanted to bring on sick week too with six bottles. Yeah, so it would be perfect now. And sick week doesn't have trailer rules. So I'm going to just tow this behind the truck next year <laughs> just to carry my nitrous. Pretty sure it's a little too big for that. Right. Uh, came with some other shelving and stuff. Came with a full set of AN wrenches. Oh, shoot. Those are the expensive ones too. Dude, that's like 200 bucks right there. Yeah. And then the fuel jug holder. So... It's really, really nice in here. I want to add some more lighting. Uh, these are all 110, so you got to plug in the generator to power those up. And then this one is 12 volt when it's hooked to the trailer. So I want to add a couple more for when it's just or hooked to the truck, I mean. So I have a few more lights, AC unit, and then uh, maybe some shelving in front of it. Should be good to go. Nice thing is, too, this door works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kyle Dude, our, kind of pain. our trailer <laughs> needs some work. That's Cletus's see. old trailer for those that may or may not know. And we have definitely Seen put some miles things. on that thing. The door's falling off. It's we coming usually, apart. We usually hold his door shut with a ratchet strap to the wall. <laughs> now it's freaking self tapered <laughs> yeah. shut. So, yeah, this thing's door. nice. But yeah, for the deal I got on it, man, I really I couldn't be happier. So been a long time coming really needed to, to upgrade dude what an upgrade from the shed now you can just start living in I here know, dude and your ac unit, unit that'd be freaking living <laughs> so yeah this is this the new unit man oh yeah pretty sweet I'm pretty excited about it so for today's video i wanted to include a recap on where we are at with the tesla plaid just kind of go over what it's been through the last couple months to get to this point because as of today, it is legal and drivable on the road, which is pretty cool. But I just wanted to go back over how it came to be. So as you know, we got the Tesla Plaid a couple months ago. I won it on an online auction on Copart. It was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I drove overnight to pick this thing up. It was rear-ended, and it had damage to the back hatch, the rear bumper, the rear crash bar, and the rear tear light. It got into the quarter panel a little bit. But I went and picked this thing up brought it back and after finding out the low power battery needed to be replaced in the front of the car to get it running, I ordered 
one of those. We put that in there and the car came to life and we were able to get this thing running and driving. It was listed as a run and drive from the online auction. And once we got it off of the trailer, we tried to see what we could do to fix the rear end damage. We hooked it to the big old oak tree in our yard and we were able to pull the dent out a ways and then we did it again for a second time and pulled it out even more. And then after that, we picked up the other Model S that had caught on fire. I got a really good deal on that, picked it up for 500 bucks and it had a good hatch, it had a good rear bumper, all the parts we needed to kind of piece together our Tesla Plaid. So we uh, broke that one down, we got the hatch off of it, swapped that over, we did some more pulling on the Tesla Plaid to get everything lined up where it needed to be. We got the bumper put on, and after everything was all said and done, we got this thing looking pretty dang good for a $500 fix. And we are by no means experts when it comes to bodywork. So we got some pretty exciting news today, guys. You know, a while back we got the Plaid. At the time it was a really good deal on Copart. 60 grand as of right now, it's not that good of a deal because these things have gone down like 20,000 in the last couple months. So the timing on that didn't really work out in our favor, but regardless, we still got a decent deal on this thing. As you guys saw, it was rear-ended. We fixed all that up. And as of today, boys, she is officially road legal. We took it to an inspection place and we got it inspected. I was able to get the title switch from salvage to rebuilt and I got it registered and insured and she has tags. If you look right here on the inside of the door, we got our identification plate rebuilt sticker right there. So they stick that on there after the inspection. And then, yeah, I took this little envelope they gave me to the DMV and I was able to put tags on it. And now we can actually drive this thing and you know, do whatever we want with it. But the main reason I did that is because we plan on doing some stuff to the Tesla. I don't know what the future holds. So before we completely mess this thing up and can never go back to get the title switch from salvage to rebuilt, we figured we'd get it done now while it was still fixable. So now if we go to do some stuff into the, now if we go to modify this thing or change up the look of it, foreshadowing, um, we will be able to still register it and put plates on it. That so, was very subtle, my guy. <laughs> it's not gonna look like a Tesla for long is all I'm gonna say. But yeah, she's good to go. I don't know how it passed, honestly. I mean, I guess we're certified freaking car rebuilders now. <laughs> Boots back, boys chop shop. What's the up? back looks no better than it did in the last video. We still have this bad gap right here, but um, you know, I was told that it's not too big of a deal. They, yeah, don't touch that. What kind of bondo do you use, my guy? You want to see what my bondo is? <laughs> Are you going to take off this masterpiece? Dude, so this is painter's tape that I spray painted black. Okay, so if, they don't care about all the little cosmetic stuff. As long as the main body components were replaced, I think if I if I stand back like 50 feet, if you get looks back good. Like out to our road, then you can't even tell. But I, dude, it passed inspection somehow. <laughs> so behind my uh, my tape right here, and that's our our body filler is a rag <laughs> that I stuffed in there. Hey, I need that but back, dude. We're good to go. So other than that, and the gap right here is pretty solid. We also got the rest of the interior for the uh, back. Look at that. The electric hatch works just fine. Been using it as a parts runner, so we got some plastic back here. But it's got the carpet in the back of it. Ain't perfect, but dude, it was good enough. I uh, showed it to one of my buddies, and he was like, you know, I think it's good enough to uh, get an inspection done. And we were going to do some more to it even and make it even nicer. I was going to take it to an actual body shop, and we are going to try to pull this whole side up a little bit more. But he's like, you know, I'll just take it, see what they say, and go from there. And we're good to go, boys. Look at that. We got a plate. Tesla yeah. is legal. So now we can start messing this thing up. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. We also just got the flywheel back for the MR2. Check that thing out. Ready to go. So they actually had to machine the mounting surface as well because when you machine the friction surface, that is going to get thinner. So you have to machine the mounting surface so everything stays where it needs to be. But we're good to go. Gonna put that back in. And get the MR2 ready for Cletus and cars. Get that carbon fiber. Bleh, can't talk. Get the carbon fiber door fixed. Get the sidekick up and running. And uh, yeah, hope to see you guys out there. And I'm really excited to get started on the Tesla build now that it's all good to go.
and I'm sure you guys are going to love what it turns into. But it's going to take some time. But I'll see you guys later. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.